What's up everybody, Dare Ting here. All right, so I'm continuing to test the 16 inch MacBook Pro in real world situations and I'm you know, reporting in, this is my third test for you. I've done a hard drive test to check the uh, you know, read write speeds for external hard drives. Um, I've done render tests and uh, you know, on um, you know, my uh, fully edited timeline. And so uh, today I wanna talk to you about um, you know, really pushing the limits of like massive files um, that you might encounter when you're video editing. And so uh, I shot a sequence um, in uh, December just last month and um, it was on the Red Helium 8K. So I wanted to do an action sequence that is uh, fully continuous and uh, has a high frame rate, 120 frames per second, and it's all action. And um, you know, uh, so it's, it's, it's coordinating uh, the camera, and it's coordinating uh, you know, a stunt team of 10 people, um, and uh, you know, getting the focus right, and all that thing. And uh, you know, the last thing you want is for um, you know, the footage to be not so good. And so um, really the reason why I chose the RED 8K was because uh, it had the 120 frames per second at um, 4K. And um, so, uh, you know, uh, and a big shout out to EVS, uh, the company that I uh, rented from. They gave me an awesome deal in LA. Um, and so it was an opportunity to test the camera and uh, test the high frame rate. Um, because, you know, normally DSLRs or uh, mirrorless cameras can right now only still do HD 120 frames per second. So. Uh, because of that limitation, hey, I'm testing this really, really um, more, definitely more expensive camera and, um, you know, the resolution of the 8K. All right, so um, I'm happy to report that bringing in the R3D files, um, you know, and reviewing them, super, super easy. Um, I didn't have to do any plugins, I just kind of dragged them in. Uh, this is for DaVinci Resolve though. Uh, Premiere Pro, I am not sure, but I am working with an editor who's actually gonna do the final product in Premiere Pro. And I, I'm happy to report actually that he was able to handle on his iMac. But really, I'm testing this MacBook Pro and I wanna know if I can handle these big RAW files. And um, it's, uh, it's completely seamless for me. Um, I'm able to, you know, double click on the file and um, play back the footage and it looks, um, looks good and I'm not losing frames. So bam, at 8K, that is super, super exciting, um, you know, that a laptop can handle this type of uh, footage. It's the most uncompressed, it's uncompressed and it's 8K. So that's future proofing you for uh, at least five years. That's the way I look at it. Um, because 8K TVs aren't gonna be ubiquitous for maybe five, maybe even 10 years. Uh, I'm super happy with the 4K right now. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, and most cameras right now are only shooting at the 6K mark uh, or you know five and four. So um, super, super exciting. Okay, so part two is render times. now. With the bulkier files, um, you know, these raw files, my render times went up significantly, uh, but still faster than real time. So um, just to kind of give you some statistics here, I added about five minutes in addition to, um, you know, what I already had. So, um, you know, my total runtime for this movie is gonna end up being about uh, 87, 88 minutes. So, um, yeah, with a five minute addition of footage that is in RAW, varying between 4K and 8K, still RAW files, um, the render time went up to 45 minutes from an average of somewhere between 32 and 35 minutes. This is just pure laptop, no eGPU Pro. So, um, you know, you can see like just adding that RAW footage Man, it's, you know, you, your render times bump up. But still, I mean, if I have like an 88 minute movie and it's able to render the full movie at um, 45 minutes, that's, that's awesome. Cause that's, you know, faster than real time. Which up until now, I have been only experiencing real time, slightly more than real time with my 2016. So that's a ton of time saved. 
um, especially since you know I'm outputting in different formats, sometimes HD, sometimes 4K, and you're distributing them across um, different teams. Um, that is a huge, huge, huge time saver. Um, so, um, so let's 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 talk about overall what my thinkings are. Um, you know, obviously I'm pushing the limits on what's necessary because I'm doing a feature film. I think you know feature films are pretty much you know, the most difficult thing to manage in terms of footage and, and you know, uh, other things too, like sound and color. Um, so, you know, this laptop is, is really exciting for those people that travel a lot or are on, on production a lot. So, you know, it's, it's really good for somebody who, you know, wants to be shooting somewhere and editing there at the same time. Um, or, you know, so, so like let's say the client needs something right away. This is perfect for that. Um, you know, you're at least able to handle the footage even, even if you're shooting on the red, even if you're shooting a commercial uh, film, shooting on the RE or whatever, you, you can do that with a laptop. You don't have to wait till you get home. You don't have to be in the studio. You can be on location and you can uh, see what's going on. So that's super, super exciting. Now, um, if you're a wedding videographer, I think that also like you might be in a crunch sometimes. They might shoot in the morning and you might want to edit all those films, uh, all the highlights clips for people and you know output it and that'll be you know super super easy for you um, to do because you'll be able to just copy over the footage real fast on the on the laptop. Maybe you you know get the get the large hard drive. And uh, you're you're even giving them highlights reel um, in the you know in the evening banquet, which is like, man, that's like super exciting, and that's something that not everyone can offer, or at least um, you know at the level you know if you're producing really really beautiful images, um, you can produce something that's awesome and that's going to help sell your product. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, and then I mean I think for people who are um, you know out on the move with documentaries um, or um, you know, you're and you're and you're traveling. That is, uh, you know, this this laptop is really, really gonna, really, really gonna do it. But you know, um, I would say that, hey, you are still okay with a 2016 um, laptop if you're not pushing the limits on what kind of footage you're using. So um, you know, take that into consideration. If you want to save the money, uh, you don't need this laptop. That's my personal opinion. You don't need this laptop, but um, it's definitely going to save you time, and you're going to be much more efficient owning it. So um, there's a huge amount of value in purchasing it, but you know only if you have the work to dictate the cost. Otherwise, I'm still of the budget-minded. I'm a budget-minded person, and up until now, I probably would have. Um, you know, uh, even the, even the laptop that I had was uh, budget-minded. It was you know last year's model, and uh, it was you know on sale at a good price. But uh, in this case, because uh, this is the level that I'm sort of getting at and uh, working on, um, something like this is a great investment for me because I'm going to get the returns on the price um, fairly quickly back, especially in terms of time, so I can work more often. Um, so. Uh, that's my summary for the 16-inch MacBook Pro. It's great if you have the work that dictates it. Um, so, all right. So, I hope you'll stay with me. I am continuing to test the, the you know, the, the MacBook Pro and uh, and other items too. So, uh, I'll be reporting in on uh, different uh, cameras and technology. So, I hope you'll subscribe. All right. Thanks.